Hi everyone, today we're going to look at the BRICS uh, timers in this controller and we'll look at the basic timers that are, are available to you through the instruction set and the first one that we'll look at is the up timer. Now currently we are connected to our PLC via our USB which is right here and what we'll do is take a look at our program here. Now I've got my browser window open which shows you that I'm running my main program. Um, I've got my uh, data view uh, open and it's uh, monitoring some of the bits um, that are in my program and then here's my actual main program itself in which we're monitoring the status of bits as well. So every time we talk about timers we have to talk about timing charts and I've put together just a quick one here. If you see um, in this first uh, instruction set my up timer I have my X0 which is right here. When that turns on um, the accumulator of the timer starts timing and when the um, accumulator timer reaches the preset value, in our case here it's 5 seconds, the output then will turn on or the T0 done bit will turn on. That's right here. In turn, the actual physical output Y0 then will turn on and we can see that in our PLC. So over here, we here's our status bits. So let's just force this on and we'll just hit force, we'll turn that on. Okay, and you can see my timing bit timing down. Now as soon as that gets to 5, it'll turn on the output, which is exactly what we expected to see. Now once I turn it off, it resets everything. So unforce. And sure enough, everything gets reset. Now you'll notice that on the instruction itself, we have this little triangle up here, and it's yellow. That indicates that it's a multi-scan instruction. That basically means that it takes several scans of the PLC in order to function um, with this instruction. So this instruction needs that those multiple scans in order to look at all these different variables and, and figure out what it's doing. So that is what we call our up timer. And you'll also notice that um, as soon as I uh, turn this on, we'll force this again, and it will start uh, timing our accumulator as soon as I turn it off okay it actually resets and that's exactly what this timing chart right up here is supposed to represent or trying to represent for us our next instruction is actually the down uh, timer and the down timer um, you'll notice the timing chart looks exactly the same in which it is and that's because instead of counting up, now we're just counting down, so we're going from a preset value of 5 seconds down to 0, which then the, uh, the timer bit will be turned on. So let's turn that on. Force that on. And sure enough, what you see is now our timer coming down. And when that's finished, then our second output, uh, Y1, now you will see it turn on. So once again, I unforce that and it will actually then reset that timer back to my, my uh, preset value of five seconds. So the next one is gonna be our accumulation up timer. And our accumulation up timer actually has uh, two inputs. Right? We have a a timer input X2 and then we have X3 which actually is my reset because the timer um, accumulation timer is on it will keep accumulating until I get my set value so unlike the previous two examples um, when we um, reset or turn off that input the timer reset itself in our case here it the accumulation will just keep on accumulating until it actually hits that uh, set value so let's try that. We'll turn this on, force it, and sure enough it starts timing. If I turn this on or off, unforce it. Okay, so currently right now it's at 6.04. 
Now, if I turn it back on again, um, what you'll see is that it will continue with the six and keeps on going. Let's unforce it. And then we can reset it. Um, and there's our reset. So let's try that again. Let's just force that a little bit and then we'll turn it off again. Force it on. Unforce. Okay. So when I've unforced it, what you'll see is that my accumulation value is now 3.337. You can also see this in our data view um, app or situation here. And you'll see that as I go along, you can now, these are just memory areas in the PLC. So if I want to, I could actually go over here and I can uh, modify this um, accumulation value and we can put in any value we like. We could put uh, 4.67. We'll put that in. Um, and so we can put 4 in. So then if we want to uh, we say four six seven zero. We can write that in, and you see four point six seven zero. So again, we can. These are just memory areas, so we can modify or change those any way we want. So that is the accumulating up timer. So the next one we'll do is accumulating down timer, which is exactly the same thing, except for again it counts down. So what we'll do is we'll force it on. And sure enough, you can see my timer is timing down. And as soon as it times down to the end, it turns on my dumb bit. My dumb bit then fires my output, which we see on our PLC here. Let's unforce that. And so the next one is our global timer. Now the global timer is similar to the accumulation up timer except that your reset now comes from a separate instruction altogether called the reset timer instruction. So we can have um, you know my reset in multiple locations throughout and it just triggers that my uh, timer can be reset and we specify the timing number. So let's uh, we can force this on and you see it timing down we can unforce that okay so we've stopped it and you can see here that my timer four my dumb bit is on so my output is on and then anywhere in the program I can have this other variable here and when I execute it it actually goes and resets my my uh, timer wherever it is located within the program. Okay. So the next uh, one um, that they, they provide as a general instruction is an off delay timer. Now what what happens here is um, X8 will come on or my input condition which automatically triggers my output of my off delay timer to come on. So let's just uh, fire that on. So it's on, you can see immediately my output condition comes on, so my output on my relay comes on. So if I turn this off, then what happens is it will start timing from my trailing edge of my input signal, and it has that time frame of five seconds before it turns off. So that's my off delay. So let's unforce that. And sure enough, we have the timing, it starts timing, and then as soon as it gets down to zero, it will turn this off, and my output then turns off. All right, so very straightforward. Um, off delay timers are, are great when you wanna uh, pre-warn something. Um, you can do that. Um, things that need to, to cool down, say a fan, you need to, that fan on for a certain amount of time after the machine stops. And then also we also have a on delay timer. Again, the on delay timer looks very similar to our, our on timer, our uh, up timer, or down timer, 
depending on accumulation. So we'll just try that. Force it. And as soon as we do, you, again, you see it timing up. As soon as it hits, to, hits the uh, preset value, then it turns the output on. Sure enough, that's exactly what it's doing. So we'll enforce that. And the last time we're going to look at it, it's kind of unique. What it is, it's called a frequency timer. And the frequency timer actually calculates the counts per second, minute, or hour that we set that it's coming on and off. And we have a filter on there if we want to um, limit the amount that it actually um, oscillates a little bit. So an example, what we have here is I have a 100 millisecond um, pulse flag. So it's pulsing every 100 milliseconds, which is equal to 10 times a second, which is equal to 600 times per minute. And what I want is I want a count per minute. So when I turn the X10 on, it uh, enables this instruction. It's going to calculate in a real uh, number here on my output exactly how many counts per minute I'm getting on that input signal. So let's force that on. And sure enough, what you'll see here is my real number calculating um, and it's showing me a value of close to 600, which is exactly what we calculated what we were looking for. So very good in terms of trying to find, say, line speed or um, a frequency that the output's actually turning on and off. All right. All right, that's it for now. Now, all the links and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. And if you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to ACC Automation and subscribe to our website. When you do, you'll get notification every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.